friends uh, so far we have discussed about the textures of sedimentary rocks their formation and the structures of sedimentary rocks all these govern their application type of sedimentary rocks and their application in our various industries including construction let us go ahead one by one sandstone in the wentworth scale just now we have presented from this fine sand to coarse sand the sandstone is a type of rock formed by particles ranging in that that is just now we have discussed a sent worth classification i just remind you this this yes this is the this 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 they if their confection lithification cementation forms a kind of rock we call sandstone and these generally develop this kind of graded bedding current bedding structures like this and that kind of sedimentary rock sandstone where we can make use and what are its character i invite your attention it is formed by cementation of sand particles the particle size is between 0.1 mm to 2 mm in diameter it is not too fine so that molecular attractive force do not permit easy flow of water as we have in clay but it is fortunately coarser than that it means the inter or surface or molecular attractive force is less as compared to that of the clay variety of colors are available depending of on their color their attraction that is some kind of sandstones are built for some temples in central india or north india because of the attractive color even in pattadakallu we say these are all sandstones so beautifully colored because of the current bedding structure thus their color and additional structures present in them make them more attractive for architectural work various varieties of sandstone we have silicious silica sand sand is nothing but silica and cementing material is also silica that is sio2 depending on the composition of the water can be partially soluble that is like a colloidal state sand we have sio2 composition a percolating water if has a ph less than 7 say 6 say it is acidic it is able to dissolve certain amount of silica it is not strictly dissolution it is a colloidal state partially so dissolved if that silica also enter into the sand bed then this silica is able to bind the neighboring grain and that act as a cementing material but generally their percentage is less than 15% so cementing material is also silica sand is also silica this composition wise is same and therefore these are durable chemically do not get affected easily advantage there are some kind of sandstone in which cementing material is a carbonate carbonate can also be transported in a solution for in a sand bed that water can percolate that carbonate has ability to bind as we have in our concrete it is not nothing but calcium carbonate cement so calcium carbonate if is the cementing material that can bind the sand and form the sandstone we have a little message here cement is a carbonate a this can be dissolved again therefore if that is the case 
if i have a sandstone of a cementing material silica cementing material carbonate which one i have to prefer depends on the kind of environment carbonate is soluble means it can become weak then we have iron oxide also can be a cementing material that is iron oxide partially can dissolve in water in the absence of oxygen sufficient oxygen in the atmosphere it forms feo in presence of plenty of oxygen in the atmosphere it become fe2o3 fe2o3 or fe3o4 are not soluble if it is fe it is soluble if that water enter the sand bed and they there are two way they may coat the sand plus bind the sand the cement now this kind of sandstone is a reddish brown in color it can be an attractive color depends on the amount of sand colored sand or iron coating thus iron coated sandstone in badami pattadkallu we have beautifully those are coated with iron thus we can get a beautifully colored sandstone if iron coating in one hand today's atmosphere is oxygen rich iron do not undergo it is more stable in the oxide form therefore it is not getting affected by our environment it is stable in the given environment so often we have argillaceous material clay also can act as a binding material and this is a kind of impurity it do not give attractive attractive color to the sandstone it binds and presence of clay do often make the rock less attractive therefore depending on the type of sandstone i can decide upon the specific application for that the texture the it's all sandy mode of formations they carried in the form of saltation or sand 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 and get deposited they get compacted we call mechanically formed we also call simply clastic means not soluble sandstone is a hard massive and compact and very useful it is commonly used as a material for construction masonry block we have used we can use but not everywhere where there is a high rainfall area if we use a sandstone sandstone by virtue of their porosity dampness develops in our building so not every depending on so but in a low rainfall area yes it is attractive building stone they are used pavement stone yes we have used them plenty advantage it permits water to flow down so thus water should be drained out from our pavement then only pavement becomes stable this rock permits road stone people use the red port of india is made of red sandstone need not say it's a attractive color and usefulness just i repeatedly quote <coughs> the badami and this so these beautiful forts are made of of constructed out of this sandstone so beautiful palace indeed no we have another important attractive rock limestone is another sedimentary rock importance of the limestone we know in the manufacture of cement and it's also used for flooring purpose etc now what is this limestone it is formed by chemical as well as organic process chemical precipitation of calcium carbonate from dissolved water or uh, due to the organisms that are present in the sea water which uh, 
absorb this carbonate for their life activities, then also possible to have this kind of deposition means organic activity is also involved, then they can be organically formed. So, this is another. They do contain chemical precipitate, do contain chalcedony because certain amount of silica is also soluble, calcium carbonate is also soluble. When we take only carbonate, not necessarily come sometimes depending on the physico-chemical condition of the seawater, silica also get deposited, therefore we do get chalcedony or clay like impurities when these are all deposited, some suspended material, fine clay like particles also get trapped and deposited by and they are also found along with that rock. Some limestone they like calcareous, these sedimentary rocks are soft, easy to identify. If you break immediately, they are broken with a curved surface, but very soft, easy to identify. Another method to identify them is put a little dilute HCl, if they give effervescence easy, then we can identify. This is an important source. What is the texture? It is a massive. So, because it is very fine grain, there is no regular orientation of the particle, more or less our particles are so minute, equal size. They are chemically or organically formed sedimentary rock. They find application in metallurgical industry as a flux material. In iron industry, we use a lot of limestone as a flux. Yes. In building stone, just now I have said often for flooring purpose people use and then if it is a dolomite type, magnesium rich, it can be a source of magnesium, dolomite if lesser magnesium, generally we get from magnesite, not dolomite is that attractive because dolomite if present not attractive for cement industry because magnesium content is low, it is not attractive as magnesium ore, uh, widely used in building material that is. So, its application ultimately depends on the type. I have pure limestone, much better use is the cement industry. I have a carbonate rock rich in magnesium, much better use is the source of magnesium. Dolomite I can use for building. Yes, these are some different varieties of, see just now I have said pure, like say Bagalkota limestone. So beautiful limestone, very fine and pure, suitable for cement industry. Now this is a calcareous, a lot of shell fragments in it. And see these are some of those dolomite rich, etc. There are different varieties. Pink is also what we get from some of the mudul that side we get. So, now, shale is another widely found sedimentary rock. As you see, it is a laminated layered like rock, fine grain made up of silt like material, particle size is this one. And it is easy to identify, just a scratch with even fingernail, with an iron needle, a glass plate, whatever, it is easily scratchable. And when these particles are more, when you apply load, especially the road, etc., they form a dust. When this get mixed with water, they become muddy. It means, what is the lesson for me? Although it is available in plenty, I should not use them for our highway work like, correct? They become dusty and muddy road. I have to get out of it. When it is welded into a compact rock of argillaceous material, we call it a shale. When it is well bedded, splits easily in low cost building people use 
in a rural area although it is not advisable but people still use so it is a clay like material it is also again formed by mechanical simply deposition of particle from suspended medium and we in general it is called clastic means not soluble in water shells are used in manufacture of bricks and tiles there it is easy because it is soft we can powder it mix with it bake it and form a beautiful bricks used also in tile factory mangalore tiles you have heard that is yes now laterite is another important sedimentary rock you have seen beautiful some buildings constructed after the sandstone no, sorry laterite it is a reddish brown color dressed into by virtue of its softness easy to dress that is one advantage you can cut into various or any size cost of dressing is easy its a load bearing capacity is nearly at par with or equal to that of a brick we get on an average we can say 30 meter per ton we say this also has got another advantage of this is often without often not always without it does not require any painting this or that if it is covered inside yes uh, nothing happens but if exposed to water heavy rain fall area it is weak therefore where we use we have to decide upon laterite and what are what is a laterite it is see contain clay minerals like white here 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 this is a clay this is a iron oxide sometimes we do find silica so it's a mix of chemically also mix of equal proportion nearly alumina iron silica physically also we have some certain silica some clay mineral iron oxide etc locally if iron oxide and silica washed away it is enriched in alumina it become a bauxite therefore invariably possibility that wherever we have laterite may be low grade may be high grade bauxite is also possible but our focus is laterite as a construction material so it is a residual material what do we mean by residual deposit suppose i have a parent rock parent rock is weathered weathered rock is present after weathering during weathering what happens some materials like pebbles sand gravel clay everything get transported some soluble materials also get transported but something which did not get transport and they remain in the same place where they formed now they were not disturbed not transported they are lying in the same place where they are formed if water still percolate through them there may be some this especially some this iron like materials can temporarily dissolve and they percolate from top to the percolate they may percolate downward but this is a colloidal state unstable state they cannot remain in solution for a longer time and they can at a depth they can re deposit redeposit precipitate what happens that iron which is carried in colloidal form is binding whatever the materials present whether it is a sand like whether it is a clay like whether it is a iron like they bind and they form a rock and that is called a laterite what we have on the top we have a kind of granular soil you 
engineers call morum soil, we call a lateritic soil that is nothing but a granular, porous, reddish brown, iron rich soil. On the top we have that soil, that water permitted water to percolate and to that some iron is also got dissolved, they go deeper and re-precipitate from the rock. Message for me is, if I have in area, I have a granular lateritic soil below that, likely that I have a laterite. Now suitable topography, we will discuss it later. I can get even bauxite also. So this is in two way. One is your building materials, another I have an interest on bauxite and this soil itself, itself is another important source of material for construction. The laterite I take in this sense. Any rock which is containing iron and alumina, especially alumina can form this rock on weathering. After weathering everything is removed and what is left is this one. So any rock basically rich in alumina along with iron excellent this rock can form. We have basic igneous rocks along Maharashtra coast. We have these rocks are developed along Goa, Karnataka, Kerala coast. We have basic igneous rocks are not there. We have acidic igneous rocks like granite knees. They also have formed a laterite. So, those both type of rocks. What is important is the climate that determines. So, they have concretionary structure like this uh, cavities because something is dissolved and removed. We have some cavity like in this rock do contain because of that it when cement work then also it is good cement can go and hit they may need more cement that's also another problem anyway the mode of a formation is a residual deposit just now i have said it is used in building construction yes these are some of the rocks which conglomerate horizontally bedded we have some iron rich rocks iron and alternate layers of iron and silica and we have some brexia rocks containing angular fragments these are not attractive building materials but they have some other importance. They, by virtue of their presence in an area, for example, we have a conglomerate, it can be porous, it can be a good aquifer, it, there may be chances of mineral deposit with them, or if it is an iron ore, the abundance of iron may be high enough to mine them as ore, etc. This is once again the laterite, which a good laterite, a dressed laterite. Yes. Friends, we have discussed sedimentary rocks, igneous rocks. If both these rocks undergo a kind of alteration in their physical form, then they result a kind of rock called metamorphic rock. Meta means change, morph means form, morphology. Metamorphic rocks are such type of rocks formed out of pre-existing sedimentary or igneous or even metamorphic rocks itself. Such rocks we have called metamorphic. Meta means change. Morphic shape, metamorphic is the rocks which have changed their form, changed their shape. So, transition of one rock into another, why they have to undergo change 
in their form there is some external force acting on them in response to that force that is pressure and temperature every rock formed under certain set of pressure and temperature condition now they are forced to subjected to a, some different kind of pressure and temperature obviously they undergo modification that is if the rocks are subjected to pressure and temperature then those which under which they have developed now they can undergo metamorphism metamorphic rocks are produced either from sedimentary or from igneous or from metamorphic rock through process prograde or retrograde so parent rock is called protolith earlier existing rock rocks from which the metamorphic rocks was formed the parent some pre existing rock so now therefore how we can define metamorphism metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks are defined as those rocks which have been formed through the operation of various types of metamorphism what is the different type of metamorphism on the pre existing primary or secondary or other rocks due to intense change in pressure there should be sufficient change in pressure there should be change in temperature or chemically active fluids either temperature pressure chemically active fluids or in combination what all this do they either they change what is that involving either change in a texture or a structure or mineral composition itself the active fluids and gases the temperature pressure etc are responsible for modification in the pre existing rock this change may be in their texture nature of grain packing different minerals crystals grain packing or in their orientation in their structure itself the way they minerals are oriented their habit develop different shape etc or change in the mineral composition originally there was some mineral example hornblende may be changed over to chlorite under the influence of metamorphism it means earlier present mineral now changed over to a new mineral due to influence of this or reconstitution in both there may be change in the mineral composition as well as the texture structure and texture st structure and mineral composition anything combination all these because of the application of pressure and temperature chemically active fluids pre existing rocks undergo modification in their in their form structure mineral mineral composition remember there is this is solid rock pressure applied temperature applied its chemical composition does not change chemically active fluids and gases may be responsible but they do not participate they do not become part of the rock nothing is added nothing is removed e why therefore rocks undergo principle oh, undergo metamorphism principle of metamorphism is equilibrium what do you mean by equilibrium rocks or minerals 
sedimentary, igneous, metamorphic, they all have formed in some set of pressure and temperature condition or chemical environment, surrounding environment. If that rock now is subject to a new pressure where we have a higher pressure may be, a higher temperature may be, a different surrounding fluids and then they are no longer in equilibrium with the surrounding condition. Friends, rock did not come, that condition developed here itself. Originally there was some pressure, now some additional pressure developed. Originally there was some kind of environment, some fluids migrating through this, they must have changed this composition. They did not add some migrating fluids came here, changed the composition of this surrounding environment and that fluid must have escaped. This change in environment, surrounding, and this particular rock is not happy with it, not in equilibrium we call. Or the temperature, temperature there it was at the time of rock formation may be say 50 degree. Now today it is a 200 degree. At that temperature they are not happy, not equilibrium. So long as they are not in equilibrium with that condition, they tend to achieve equilibrium. Under that process they undergo modification the, in the mineral orientation <coughs> possible, mineral packing possible, instead of minerals written this way or are compactly packed or out of the existing some new minerals are formed. That is they get a different habit, different property. It is a metamorphism. Can I give a simple example? A very silly example. Balekai, we have heard, banana raw. You bring it and keep it in a box and keep it for two, three days. What happens to the banana? It becomes a fruit. When it was raw, green, <coughs> it was hard enough. No sweet, no tasty. After few days, it became good fruit and it is soft, yellow in color, not green and tasty. Have you added anything to it? What you have done? There was change in the pressure and temperature condition. <coughs> you have kept in a box or a drum covered with it, some kind of a suffocation environment for them. Possible. Few days you have left, they became a fruit. Often you may also apply lime over it. It gets better color, quickly it becomes a fruit. The lime did not went into the banana, but lime created an environment. So chemical composition of banana did not change just because you have put a lime on it. It means that a surrounding chemical environment makes them to undergo alteration. Just now I am giving the example of banana. Or if you put in a box and cover it with this, then it did not come in contact with the external air, a different environment it has. It become a different kind of, out of the existing, there was no addition, nothing happened, but it became a good fruit. That's what metamorphism, nothing is added, nothing is removed, but external environment is different because of that they have undergone this kind of change. Now 
main factor for them is a temperature and the pressure chemical active environment. See what is a temperature when you put a, your banana in a box like this and cover it, yes, something different environment, something different pressure. When you put a lime on that, something different, a chemical active environment. Example, exactly similar. Now, temperature for metamorphism in the earth crust, how it happens? We know if this is the earth crust, earth surface, as you go deeper and deeper, temperature increases. This increase in temperature with depth we call geothermal gradient. We have mentioned in our previous session that for every 100 meter depth increase, temperature of 1 centigrade increases. So, this is a geothermal gradient. This increase in depth, increase in temperature is one important source of temperature at certain depth, higher temperature is available, they can metamorphose the rocks. That is a geothermal gradient. Often, it is not the depth, magma at depth is coming to the surface, while they come to the surface, they supply heat, means it was hot liquid. When they come, they come in contact with the rocks, and these rocks get exposed to high temperature fluid and they get the heat. This heat is enough to metamorphose them. That is magmatic heat. Magma intrusion can bring heat and supply to the rocks and then modify them. That is magmatic pressure. Sorry, magmatic intrusion or magmatic magma related heat source that is another important. Now, this is important source. Now, what is this pressure? Pressure is solely or sometimes associated with the temperature. Only pressure is also possible. Along with pressure, temperature is also possible. Pressure is very important. In the earth, what is the pressure as we go deeper and deeper, the load of the materials over them increases and that is the load. Pressure is responsible for the metamorphism, the load, overlying load is one kind of pressure for metamorphism. This is due to increase in depth. Not necessarily it is due to increase in depth. I have a rock. I have a rock here. I have a rock here. This is the earth. There was this a kind of rock. Now, if this rock is subjected to a pressure like this, sorry, I redraw. I have a ground like this, I have a rock like this and there is another rock like this, okay. Now, the depth is not that important here because both are in the same depth, pressure or load over them is equal. But if this rock is subjected to a kind of pressure, this get folded like this. No. So, I am pushing the load on them now is coming from because of this force. This is pushed by here and that is pushing this. And this kind of pressure development is a crustal disturbance. Within the earth crust, there is a some kind of disturbance, especially folding, mountain building, or if magma is coming up, that pushes the rocks aside. 
this magma is not supplying any heat for this, but magma has to make path for it. They push the rocks aside. Automatically, these rocks are subjected to pressure that exert pressure on this. This rock also gets affected by metamorphism. It means the kind of disturbance is called crystal disturbance. Now, again, we have another. This pressure, suppose this is, if this is the ground, if I have a rock like this, the depth is insignificant. Therefore, weight of the overlying material is not an important factor. The depth is so less, say less than 100 meter depth, the temperature rise is also insignificant. One degree temperature, two degree doesn't matter. Today, say air temperature is 25 degree, in warmer season if it is 40 degree, this 15 degree temperature, when they can tolerate, don't they tolerate one degree temperature? So, within the crust, one degree, ten degree temperature is nothing for metamorphism. What matters is, suppose I have two rock masses. With me, two rock masses, I shear again at them. Then, this pressure is even on the surface, not necessarily at the depth, on the surface. And this pressure not dependent on the load of the overlying material. Wherever there are two rock materials, two materials slide against each other, there is a pressure developed at the contact. This pressure is purely on the ground or at shallow depth and this kind of pressure can also be responsible for metamorphism. One type of pressure. Another type of pressure is, this is the ground, I have a rock. As you go deeper, deeper pressure increases. This pressure is acting in some direction, that is, in this direction, if I go deeper, deeper, pressure here is different, here is different, here, here, here. As I go deeper and deeper in the direction, pressure increases. This increase in pressure is called a directed pressure. It has a direction, means its magnitude increases with its direction. Yes. So, this kind of pressure, we call it directed pressure. But beyond certain depth, the load of the overlying material and there are also pressure from other side and also pressure from all the side and this pressure equal from this direction, equal from equal and equal. Then such pressure is called uniform pressure, means pressure from all the direction is equally important. Uniform pressure is somewhat equal to hydrostatic pressure. What is that hydrostatic pressure? If in a what water column like this, if I apply a pressure like this somewhere and the pressure is distributed equally here, that is pressure in a water column is distributed. If I have applied pressure here, less pressure here, no, they are all equally distributed. So, pressure sorry, in a water column is uniformly distributed, somewhat similar situation. Any point here in that, they experience whether here, 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 here. If I have a particle, they experience similar pressure. If I have a particle here, I have a particle here, pressure here, pressure here is equal if the water column above them are equal. It means this kind of pressure we call uniform pressure, hydrostatic pressure. So, because pressure from all the directions are nearly equal, 
they are under the influence they are forced to compress themselves and such pressure is called uniform pressure or hydrostatic pressure therefore we have pressure of three kinds one is one type of pressure which is not accompanied by any temperature confined to very shallow depth at shallow depth the rocks are more brittle their action is different as you go deeper and deeper this pressure increases directed pressure as the depth increases the temperature also increases it is called dynamo thermal pressure and temperature both pressure is responsible for some orientation temperature softens the material they can undergo different kind of change at a great depth the uniform pressure prevails uniform pressure is responsible for compaction and at that depth the temperature is also very high high temperature is available therefore now we have a different environment the pressure is important factor in bringing about the metamorphic changes there is one more chemical environment i was frequently mentioning this the chemical environment just now i gave the example of bananas yes like that suppose this is the ground i have a rock this rock is surrounded by some kind of environment there is a magma intrusion and this magma intrusion is carrying some kind of fluids high temperature fluids active chemicals and this because of this their contact these materials become active they may have some exchange of material and their chemi- chemical composition reactivity etc get changed this magmatic material fluid gases did not contribute did not react with it but they have exchanged or interacted or modified the surrounding environment but this rock is surrounded by that and this rock is not equilibrium with that now this rock undergoes with the uh, modification that is metamorphism therefore in the metamorphic rocks chemically active fluids and gases not necessary or do not take active part at all they only create an additional environment they may take part that is a different kind of story but not under metamorphic so chemically active fluids that is water meteoritic water what is a high temperature water conate water water that was trapped inside the rocks can come any time carbon dioxide so hydrofluoric acid which is common again during any volcanic eruption bromine rich water fluorine rich water some of these gases etc create an environment where a rock become unstable and ha- is forced to undergo metamorphism yes now depending on the combination of these we have different type of metamorphism a magma is coming like this in the surrounding region rocks are subjected to pressure here pressure here pressure here is not different due to overlying load but magma is coming here temperature is different so variation change in pressure is not an important factor what is important factor is the temperature a metamorphism change brought about by temperature effect is called thermal metamorphism only temperature effect pressure has insignificant role so that kind of metamorphism develop especially in the vicinity of magma path magma coming they cause some kind of metamorphism this metamorphism is called thermal metamorphism 
thermal metamorphism is also called contact metamorphism because of the contact effect. What may happen? Example, this is a ground. I have these are the rocks in the ground. A magma is coming like this. It may come here or they may come here, they may come here, whatever it may be. Now what it does, the rocks in the immediate vicinity of the magma path get more heat, they undergo alteration. Rocks away from the part of the rocks away from the magmatic path get less heat and they get less metamorphosed. The rocks farther and farther away from the magma chamber may not get heat at all or very lesser amount of heat, they only undergo very minor change, minor modification. This kind of metamorphism is also kind of thermal metamorphism solely due to heat and the degree of metamorphism varies with the distance from the magmatic chamber or their contact. Such kind of metamorphism is called thermal metamorphism, also called people contact metamorphism. In the immediate vicinity, very high temperature is prevailing, a kind of metamorphism we call horn. Suppose a argillaceous rock, say a kind of a shale is subjected to this kind of effect. What may happen? This is subjected to thermal metamorphism. It may form a rock called horn fell, aluminum, etc. rich in. And away from that partially modified rock, only the rock experiences a baking effect. Only they become dark color, that's all. Away from this, here and there, some dark spots we may get, spotted shale we can call. So these are all example of this kind of metamorphism we call thermal metamorphism. Next is the dynamic metamorphism. The dynamic metamorphism, just now I have showed application of pressure at when two rock masses shear against each other, only Locally, high pressure is developed locally only. Local metamorphism takes place. On the ground, this is the ground, at this shallow depth, if two rock blocks slide each other, three dimension, if this is one block, this is another block, they are sliding like this, they are sliding like this. This is a zone where shearing has taken place. What may happen? We know at the ground level, shallow depth, the rocks are highly brittle material. On the brittle material, if you apply the pressure, what happens? They are broken. Cracks, powder, depending on the nature of the force, depending on the nature of the rock, we have different kind of metamorphism even within the dynamic. We call catastrophic, clastic, dynamic metamorphism. So, if I have for a given pressure, for a given pressure, I have a soft material, what may happen? It tends to flow like that. I have a hard material. What happens? It is broken into. I have very soft material. What happens? It gets powdered. For a given pressure, depends on the nature of the rock, it can get powdered. It's very soft rock. It is very hard rock. It is broken into fragments. Then if I have mix of those within soft material, angular fragments are get embedded, moderately neither hard soft, they uh, get sheared, pulled, then 
they develop a wrinkles like that on them and we have kind of pulled like a drag effect, drag force we get, slaty like a weak planes develop. So, it depends on the nature of the rock involved under or for this kind of forces. We call them dynamic metamorphism which operates at a shallow depth where rocks are present. Dynamothermal metamorphism is a case where both pressure and temperature are responsible. This is very important you see here. Pressure also important, <coughs> temperature also important, dynamothermal metamorphism result. So, what is the dynamothermal metamorphism is the influence of pressure and temperature together. As we have already said, if this is the ground condition, as we go deeper and deeper, geothermal gradient increases as a result of a pressure or overlying material pressure also increases, there is a both a temperature, there is a pressure and that too called directed pressure and we have different type of metamorphism at this depth if we have low pressure but directed pressure, low temperature but temperature, low pre directed pressure, low temperature brings one kind of metamorphism, obviously this can be low grade. At this depth, pressure is little high, sorry, temperature is little high, pressure is also little high directed. This can bring a different kind of metamorphism. If you go this depth, higher directed pressure, higher directed temperature, different type of metamorphism. I can trace the grade of metamorphism in this. Now, this also dependent on the rock that is subjected to pressure and temperature plus and depends on the different type of rock, it operates in a different way. How the directed pressure and temperature can operate in different way, we shall discuss little later. Friends, so far we have discussed what is metamorphism why rocks undergo metamorphism and what are the factors responsible for metamorphism. People also call agents of metamorphism, factors of metamorphism, we have just pressure, temperature, etc. Depending on the factors, we have different type of metamorphism which we shall continue little later.